Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to kick start with databases in AWS. Well, when it comes to relational databases, it can be easily managed by using AWS RDS, that is Relational Database Service. It is a pretty simple service provided by AWS where you can manage your databases at AWS Cloud. Well, now let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be another fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So AWS RDS, that is Relational Database Service. Now, first we will quickly have a glance at what exactly are relational databases. After that, we will go ahead and look into what exactly is RDS provided by AWS. After that, we will actually create a AWS RDS instance and we will understand how to create and how exactly that helps us. Well, that is basically the simple agenda of this particular video and how to connect to AWS RDS by using Spring Boot application. That is something we will look into in the next video. Well, now let's get started with what exactly are relational databases. Now, if you are already a developer, you might have fair understanding of what exactly are relational databases. Now, if I scroll down over here, you will see this particular table. So here in the header, I have ID, name, description, price, stock. Here in the ID, we have one, two, three. After that here, I have name of items like laptop, wireless, mouse, keyboard. I have description, I have price and I have stock. Now here we are storing data in tabular format, right? So we have header and each header will have respective value. So it's like rows and column format. So this is basically a tabular format where we are storing the data. And this tabular format is called as relational data. There may be multiple tables who have relation between them as well. So this simple data we can store in a database. So there are various managed databases. So if I go over here to canvas, then you will see that we have different databases like MySQL, we have PostgreSQL, we have Oracle. So these are basically the databases that we actually use in the industrial applications in order to store your database. For example, you can use MySQL inside your Spring Boot application or any other application. You can use Postgres, you can use Oracle. Now you deploy your application on a server, right? Now you deploy your application on a server. Now your application is running, but let's say this application now needs a DB. Basically your application is now connecting to a database. Now where exactly to host this particular database, right? You need to put the database to server as well, or it may have a separate server or it can go to same server as well. For example, you may have MySQL. So you need MySQL database installed on this particular server in order to perform applications or you can Keep it outside your server, have a separate server where you host your database. So now as we are deploying our application to cloud, so let's say we deploy it on EC2. So we have deployed it on EC2. We have seen how to deploy that, right? So now we are deploying our application to EC2. How about the database? The database also needs a server, right? That is when you can just put these databases in the AWS. For example, you can run them in the AWS environment directly. And how you can run that? You can run that by using AWS RDS. So let's say you want to put your MySQL database inside AWS. You can just create a RDS instance and select MySQL from there and just launch your instance and you will be able to connect to this particular databases, which is actually running in a cloud. So you don't really need to manage the server for it. AWS will manage it for you, right? So simple stuff basically. So now if I go back over here, then let's see what exactly is RDS. So RDS or relational database service is a managed database service from AWS that makes it easy to set up, operate and scale a relational database in cloud. So basically all these databases, you are just simply putting it in cloud and running it in cloud by using AWS RDS. It is a pretty simple service, which basically hosts the database for you. Now, if I go back over here, now here we are looking at the example of MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, right? If I scroll down over here, then you will see so these are basically list of databases which you can create inside AWS RDS. For example, we have Aurora DB. So Aurora DB is basically Amazon's own database system. For example, we have MySQL, right? So Aurora is created by AWS or Amazon, I would say. So it's Amazon's own database. So it's compatible with MySQL and PostgreSQL as well. So you can go ahead and select Aurora as well if you want to use AWS own database. After that, you can create MySQL database, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, you have Oracle option, you have Microsoft SQL Server also you can create. After that, you can also create IBM DB. So these are all the options provided by your AWS RDS, right? So it is pretty simple stuff. You can just go ahead and create anyone you want and connect it from your application as usual. How to do that? We are going to look into it. 
So what we can do now, now as we have seen into what exactly is RDS, now let's go ahead to AWS and let's try to create a AWS RDS instance. This is basically my AWS console. Let me zoom it a bit. After that, let's go ahead and select RDS. Let's try to search for it and let's go to dashboard. Now here, if you see, you will find the option to create a database. So I can just go ahead and let's say create a database. You have an option to restore from S3 as well. So if you're storing a backup file at S3, you can just restore a database from there as well. But for now, what we can do, we can just go ahead and create a database. So now if you see over here, create a database. Now choose a database creation method. So you can create by using standard method or easy create. Easy create means it will just bundle a package for you uh, with the best configuration and you will be able to create it. Now what we will do, we'll just go through the standard one and we will see all the options that are provided by this guy. And this is basically engine options as we have seen over here. This is basically the diagram I have uh, copied from here itself. So if you see over here, we have Aurora DB for MySQL and PostgreSQL. After that, we have MySQL and all these options that we have already seen. So for now, let's create MySQL itself. So we want a MySQL DB itself because many of us are already familiar with it. So edition, I will just select MySQL community edition. After that, you have option to select version, whatever MySQL version you want, you can go ahead and select it. After that, you have enable RDS extended support. So I believe this is a paid offering. So I will not uh, click this now because we, uh, we want to keep it free. We want to use the free tier account. After that, you have templates. So your production template use default for high availability and fast consistent performance. If you need high availability, fast performance in production environment, use this. Otherwise you can use dev. It might have lesser cost or you can use free tier. So this is for learning purpose. Use RDS free tier to develop new application, test existing application, gain hands-on experience on Amazon RDS. That is what we want. So we will just select free tier. But if I select production and if I scroll down to bottom, then you will see the estimated monthly cost, right? So you will see the cost of it. 1,702 USD, lot of money, right? So we don't want to select the production instance now. So what we will do, we will just go ahead and select free tier. Also, if you are selecting production, you will see uh, the high availability and durability options. So if you see over here, you will be able to select multi availability zone DB cluster deployment. You will have three instances in different availability zones, right? You will get redundancy across availability zones. So different availability zones, your database will be available. Increased read capacity, reduce write latency. So all these benefits you will get if you select this option, right? But it is only available when it comes to production or dev test. If you select free tier, they will just be gone. It, it will not be available for you. You will just get a single one, which will be in single availability zone. One instance in single availability zone. Now we will select that one. Now let's go below. Now here database one, I'll just keep the same default name. This is basically the name of your DB instance. After that credentials, I will say admin and I will just give some password over here in order to connect to our database. So I will just say admin one two three four i will just again say admin one two three four after that what do we have we have instance configuration what exactly you want in your instance so you have different configurations over here so you have db.t4g.micro so in that you will get two cpus one gb ram and you have different configurations over here most of them are disabled because we are using a free tier account right so i will just go ahead and select this default one after that storage 20 GB is more than enough. We don't want this much, but let's keep it as it is providing us. No problem. After that, let's go to connectivity. So connectivity is important. So if you see over here, don't connect to EC2 compute resource and you have option to connect to EC2 compute resource. So if you want this database to connect to EC2, you can select this option. I don't want to connect to EC2 for now. So I'll just go ahead and select this one. Even if you select this one, you will be able to connect to EC2. So it's not a big problem. So let's keep this one network type. I will keep IPv4 after that here public access. So I will just say yes, because we want to be able to access it publicly. So I will just say yes. And here we have VPC security firewall. Choose a VPC security group to allow access to your database. So what we will do, we'll just quickly go ahead and create a new VPC over here. We will just give it a name that let's say it's a database vpc 
database vpc i will just keep the default availability zone over here no problem and that is basically it after that you can just go ahead and give a tag i don't want to give a tag it's not a mandatory field but you can go ahead and create tags such as your environment let's say dev test or production right after that we have database authentication let's keep password authentication over here after that we have option of monitoring so we have two options database inside advanced and database inside standard since we are using the free tier account it gives us option to standard so this is basically monitoring tools which will help you to monitor the performance of your database and that's pretty much it now if you see over here we have estimated monthly cost nothing basically the amazon rds free tier available for you for 12 months so for each calendar month the free tier will allow you to use amazon rds resources listed below so 750 hours of amazon rds in single availability zone in dbt2 micro or this is basically the one that we have selected right 20 gb of general purpose ssd so that is what we have selected after that 20 gb of automated backup so this gives you backup options as well so automatic backups basically you don't even have to manage that and that's pretty much it let's go ahead and hit create databases it's behind me i don't know if you can see it i've just hit this particular option create database and it's loading for a while now and what is it suggested add-on for databases Amazon is doing some kind of promotion so let's close this I don't want any add-on now if you see over here it says creating database database one your database might take few minutes to launch so it is basically coming up so let it come up so now if you see over here it successfully created database database one for us and if you see over here the status is available now if I go inside it you will see all the details like you have a summary over here we have name we have CPU how much CPU it is using then you have activity detail we don't have any connections yet it's showing zero connections after that you have status you have the class that we have selected you have the engine and we have the availability zone this is basically asia pacific mumbai availability zone here if you see we have an endpoint to connect we have a port this is basically the default port of mysql and you have subnet and vpc details as well it is publicly accessible so all these details are provided over here after that you can go and connect to compute resources like you can go ahead and connect to ec2 or you can connect to lambda as well so all these details are basically provided over here now what we are going to do let me bring up my terminal so what i will do i'll just go ahead and bring up my terminal let me just maximize and zoom it so that it's clearly visible now here what we will do we will just try to connect to this particular database that we have created right by using this link and i will just quickly bring up the command to do that so if you see over here in the notepad this is basically the simple command to do that so mysql i one h your endpoint to amazon database hyphen p the port hyphen u the username and hyphen p will be the password that we will enter and after that what i will do i will just duplicate this command and i will go ahead to our aws instance copy this endpoint and come back over here and paste this particular endpoint after that i will just replace the username with admin as we have given the admin as username I will copy it now you need to make sure that the mysql is installed on this particular terminal whichever you are using if you are using mac you can just go ahead and install mysql by using homebrew install if you are using windows just go ahead and download mysql exe file and you can install it just fine after you have installed it you can just paste this command that we have created over here let me just paste it and let me hit now if you see over here it is asking for password so we have given password as admin1234 just hit enter now if you see over here we have logged into mysql database so the database connection is successful so if i now say show databases then you will be able to see that the default databases are visible over here and now if i go to this particular dashboard and refresh then you will see that we have one connection because now we have connected to this particular database Right. so you will see how many connections are there so now we have one connection now what we will do let me just try to create a simple database over here so what i will do i will just say i'll just say create database demo db let me hit enter let me put semicolon so database is created and now if i say show databases then you will see that our database is created demo db is basically created over here now what i will do i'll just say use demo db and and we are inside the database now what i will do i'll just try to create a simple table so this command will create it for us so we are creating employees table after that this command will add some data so insert into employees and i have added these three records 
now i will just say select star from employees there we go so we are able to see the database so we are successfully able to connect to aws rds instance and we are able to add the data to it and at the end i can just say drop table employees so drop table employees will just delete the table for me so there is nothing in the database so that's how you can perform operations on your mysql database running inside your rds instance so the same database we can connect from spring boot application as we simply connect to mysql database by using these urls that we have given over here it's pretty simple stuff and that is something we will look into the next video now what i will do over here now we have now we are done with this database right so what we will do i will just go ahead and delete this particular database because we don't want it running if it is running then it will just consume the 750 hours if you see over here you have multiple options that create a final snapshot i don't want that then retain automated backups then this guy would have created the backups for us we don't want to retain that and i acknowledge that upon instance deletion automated backups including system snapshots and point in time recovery will no longer be available that is just fine with me and you will just need to put delete me over here and delete it now if you say the status is deleting and this guy should be deleted in some time basically as you can see it has started deleting our database instance now meanwhile it is deleting let's go back over here and let's go to document so so here we have seen what exactly is a relational database here we have seen what is rds we have seen how to create an instance and we have also seen how to connect rds instance from our terminal so connect to rds instance from terminal so we have seen and now if i go back over here and now if you see it says successfully deleted db instance database one and we are not able to see any database over here so the database is basically deleted and if we see the terminal if i try to connect to that particular database again let me just put the password then you will see that we are not able to connect to it because there is no such db available so that is how you can simply make use of this particular aws rds service it's a pretty simple service which will help you to run your database on aws and you don't have to manage your database manually by using servers and stuff right it will just set it up everything it will provide you scaling it will provide you backups it will take timely snapshots so you don't have to worry about anything so that's it about aws rds in the next video we will see how we can connect to this particular database which is running inside aws by using our spring boot application so that's it for this video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet your little effort of subscribing will give me more and more enthusiasm to create more such videos share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about what exactly is aws ideas that's it for this video see you in the next video